Hi everyone. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to look into the Duolingo app. Uh, I, I personally use it every day. I think it's uh, it's really cool. I'm using it to to learn French and, and German. But uh, uh, I think it's always a good practice to look at other apps, what they're doing, how they're using their API, how the API is built. Super interesting also for me to look into something that I use daily and see how it works behind uh, the scenes. So I loaded this uh, the, the Duolingo Android app uh, to an emulator on my laptop and also using uh, Proximen, which is a, a really cool proxy tool. Uh, it has a really nice free version that you can use. You can connect it to mobile apps. You can do a lot with it. I, I also really like it. Uh, and, and when I'm analyzing an app for the first time, I look, usually I start by looking at all, at all the different domains. So I look at the, the hosts that are being used. Uh, you can obviously see that some of the hosts are external, so, so that are using Facebook Graph and stuff like that. Uh, but let's filter to see only the Duolingo related uh, subdomains. And you can see <clears throat> the main subdomain here is Android API. This is like the main API. You can also see other uh, subdomains. You, you can see a different subdomain for stories, for goals, uh, some static assets. Uh, and you can also see this BRB, which I will get to later. But uh, I loaded some of these requests into Loadmill and analyzed them. And you can see basically the login flow is really simple. It's a very simple login request. It sends the username and the password. It gets a JWT token in response. And then the, use, the net following request uses it as a header for all the following requests and very simple authentication. I also got like some of the basic requests and it's really cool because you can do a lot of stuff with it. So here I'm listing all the items on the store. But imagine that I can write a really simple script to, I don't know, automatic, automatically buy a streak freeze every day. Uh, it's, it's a really cool thing. Uh, you, can, you can do it very easily. Uh, I also looked at the, at the start session API. So basically this is actually like starting a lesson on Duolingo. And you can see you get all the, all the questions for the sessions. Uh, they call the challenges in the API. So you can see all the questions here. You can see their prompts. You can see uh, the choices that you have. And you can see what is the right choice. So if you're looking to cheat or something like that, it, it can very easily be done, although it's kind of like defeat the purpose of using Duolingo. Uh, uh, I saw a few other cool things that they're doing here. So I, I saw this BRB subdomain, which I didn't know what it is. So I kind of like Google that. And I ran into a technical blog post that they posted about how they protect uh, the streak freeze uh, when they have downtime. So it's, it's really interesting read. I mean, it's really, really simple. Basically, they have this API where they're polling for it every couple of minutes. And if they see that uh, this file exists, it's actually a file on, on S3 bucket. And if they see that this file exists, they actually have some logic in the app to address that. But uh, one cool thing I saw that they were doing is basically this file is getting a 404 most of the time because when the service is up, this file doesn't exist in this AWS bucket. And I think the reason they're doing that is that uh, when you're getting an error message from AWS, you're actually not paying for the traffic. So if they would actually have this JSON file with like a false uh, key in it or something like that, they will actually pay for all this polling. And this is a really cool way where you can poll for something. And if you're getting a 404, you're, you're not going to pay for the traffic. So it's really, it's really nice uh, way to do it. Um, yeah, and, and it's really interesting. I mean, just like looking at all the different API messages, sessions, everything that you would expect in, in an app like that. And I think things are built like really nicely. I mean, really organized way. You get all the JSON keys are really safe, explanatory. Uh, I kind of enjoy to look at it. Uh, and that's it. So uh, if you have any ideas for other apps that you want me to analyze and look at their APIs, so feel free to, to hit me on Twitter or right here in the comments. And that's it for today. Thank you.